Proton and Amara chemical shifts. Yet another one of those topics that you simply need to memorize. And this one is way more important than the C13. And what I'm trying to do with this video is tell you which ones are the important ones. Because if you look at, say, your lab manual or the back of your textbook or any other source like that, you, what you'll find is there's always big tables full of information, overwhelming. How can you memorize all of it? Well, actually, it's relatively easy to memorize all of it, but you have to chunk it the right way first, and then everything else ends up being memorized kind of by accident. But if you memorize the right three or four things to start with, or maybe the right seven or eight things or even ten things to start with, then everything else will kind of fall into place for you. So memorizing a really hard, complicated looking table is really about identifying the right trends first and then memorizing the rest of it. Having said that, I strongly advise you once again to use the strategy outlined in the C13 NMR shift video, and that is pre-test yourself first. I'm going to show you the list of things that I want you to place onto this chemical shift line, and you're going to just go ahead and pre-test first. You're going to throw some down on there, take some guesses. Why? Because then you have context, so that then when you start learning it, it's easier to put it away into the framework you want in order to then test yourself correct yourself and repeat the process until you get it right. And once again, my very strong advice here is put it down onto a number line, make some concrete predictions, then watch the rest of the video, then learn, then immediately get a blank sheet of paper and try again, and then correct yourself and repeat this process until it's automatic. And once you have that, then you'll be ready to go. For Proton and MR in particular, I refer to these as the magic numbers. If you have these memorized, then you're well on your way to understanding how Proton and MR works in terms of chemical shift. And again, if you have these memorized, then a lot of other things will become obvious as you're doing it. So plain boring methyls next to an oxygen, but not on the oxygen next to a carbonyl. That's a motif that shows up all the time next to a benzene ring or alternatively, of course, next to sort of a double bond actually on a double bond. How about bound directly to a carbonyl as opposed to one away from a carbonyl. And then of course we have the solvent and the things that are frequently in your NMR solvent. So CDCL3 is the solvent itself, but you can't get it completely pure. So always you're going to have some of the non-deuterated solvent, in this case, just plain chloroform. That'll be around. You're also going to have some water, and we always add TMS as a potential reference, of course. Make some predictions, throw them on there. Okay, once again, I'm going to start with the three magic numbers for proton NMR. They are, of course, 0.0 is where we define TMS to be, the tetramethylsilane. The other one that's particularly useful to know is there's going to be a lump right at one and a half. 1.56 or thereabouts is water dissolved in CdCl3, as long as you don't have too much of it. If you have a lot of water, then it turns out that water, bulk water, can show up at 4.8. But if you're going to memorize one, the one you need to memorize, because it almost always is there, is a small little lump right at 1.56. This one is relatively rare to see, and if you see it, it means that something's wrong with your sample. A sharp line at 7.26, that is your chloroform. You see HCl3 dissolved in your CdCl3, and normally people will just refer to that as CdCl3, but formally what it actually is is chloroform dissolved in your CdCl3. So the magic numbers, three magic numbers you definitely need to memorize are 0, 0, 0.0 for the TMS, 1.56 parts per million for water. This one doesn't show up often enough. You can ignore that one. 7.26 is your chloroform. So these three, you definitely need to have memorized. No questions about it. The other thing to note, of course, is that proton NMR goes from 0 to 10 parts per million. So think, take the carbon NMR and divide it by 20, and you're about right. So anyway, where would you expect boring methyls to be? The boring methyls are all going to show up right down here. Similar to the C13, the furthest right part of the spectrum, right around 1. So the magic number to keep in mind is 1. If you've got something that's like near an oxygen, that shows up between generally 4.5 and, and 3, 3.5-ish, three and there-ish. So of course, 4 is a good number to keep in mind. 1 for methyls, 4 for near an oxygen, the hydrogen's near an oxygen. This, of course, helps to explain why chloroform shows up at 7.26 parts per million, and that's because 
you have three electronegative chlorine atoms in the molecule. And NMR is somewhat additive. Not quite, but somewhat. Near carbonyl is going to be right at two, give or take. And in fact, it's really between two and maybe two and a half or so. Kind of overlapping slightly, but not entirely. So maybe two to three or so would be next to a benzene ring. So the two hydrogens that are kind of near a benzene ring, that would show up in the general two to three-ish range. Isolated double bonds, generally between, say, five and seven or so, give or take. So these would be the hydrogens that are actually on the double bonds. Aromatic stuff in general, things that are actually bound to the benzene ring, those tend to show up broadly between seven plus or minus one. So call it six and eight or thereabouts. So benzene ring stuff is between six and eight. And then marking the end of the scale in some sense are aldehydes, which are way out there. But actually, let's extend the scale even a little bit further because out here even further are where you get carboxylic acids specifically, so ROH. And they're these weird little humpy things and they show up around 12. All right, so what are the actual magic numbers that I want you to memorize? TMS at zero, 1.56 for water, 7.26 for CdCl3. Memorize those and those are the solvents. Then the magic numbers that you need to have for proton NMR are one for boring methyl, four for things bound next to an oxygen or other electronegative. Obviously nitrogens will be shifted a little right and so on. You can figure out why. Two for carbonyl and store that away also for near a benzene, near double bond sort of thing. But anyhow, two to two and a half is really the carbonyl and maybe 1.7 to three-ish is near benzene ring and so on. This one is less important, but between five and seven generally is where you have isolated double bonds. Aromatics, super important. So seven plus or minus one, really usually between seven and eight, give or take. Aldehydes, super important to have that touchstone memorized. That's around 10. And then acids around 12. But if you were only going to memorize three numbers, it would be methyl, carbonyl, near an oxygen. If you had those three, one, two, four, one for the methyl, two for the carbonyl, four for near oxygen. That's the bulk of it. The next most important one I'd say would be 10 for the aldehyde because it kind of defines the end of the scale. Though acids exist around 12, 10 is the practical end of the scale. Aromatics, right around seven. Double bondy things, between five and seven, closer to six, plus or minus one. This is the context. And now that you know that these are the magic numbers, I promise it'll be way easier to look at a more complicated chemical shift table and see how it all works together. You're not going to be surprised.